Welcome to What's the Book About? I'm your host, Kevin. This is Ascending by James Allen Gardner. The story of Orr, a beautiful glass woman, and her quest to save her people. Set in and expanding upon the Expendable series universe, we follow Orr from where we left her in the very first novel on the planet of Meliquin, and we follow her as she uh, travels on a bio starship called Starbiter, and as she meets various alien races, and till she eventually ends up with the degenerating and stagnating alien race called the Cashlings. Like I said, we are re being reintroduced to uh, Orr from the very first novel, and sadly, I'm going to have to throw up the spoiler warning much, much sooner than I would normally do. Uh, when I start talking about the story, so here it is. Spoilers. Okay, so this is a spoiler not for this novel, but for the very first one. You see, at the end of it, Orr died. Sort of. You see, Festina Ramos, according to all her medical knowledge and skills, Orr was dead. But just moments after she leaves the body of her friend, an advanced alien, uh, kind of looks like a white rhinoceros, comes in and with its advanced skills and knowledge, reaches much, much closer to the cusp of death to yank or back. Just like we would save someone who had a heart attack with our medical skills and knowledge and like defibrillators. But just like our skills would pull someone back, it does take a bit of recovery and it takes or four years to recover from her near-death experience. And it happens that it's just after the events of the previous book, and the previous villain has set up a backup plan to burn all of his contemporaries and pull out all their dirty secrets, which includes what's happening on the planet of Meliquin. And this is where we pick up the novel at the start. How does a dead villain do all this? Well, he contracted with a race of alien career criminals who once bought Staybot. And the family sends the youngest member, Euclid, with his wife, La Julie, on their bioship Starbiter to the planet of Meliquin to gather evidence of the events of the very first book in order to burn the people responsible. Now, once he gets there, he finds Orr's alive, and gee, a gorgeous, naked glass woman is a whole lot better of a news story than a bunch of dead body pictures. Now, he convinces Orr to go with him to give evidence because Orr is afraid she's going to be suffering from tired brain. Instead of dying, her people go into a comatose state and the only way to find a cure would be to leave and search the universe for someone with more medical knowledge than what her people had. Now, I should point out that Euclid is using this special camera made by the Shadil because it is considered untamperable. No one has ever figured out a way to alter or edit the footage or shots taken by the camera. And the Shadil are considered the source for advanced technology, everything from sensors to cameras to FTL engines, and they are considered the most trustworthy alien race by everyone in the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good cover story. You see, once those images and video is uh, taken by the camera, the Shardell know or is alive and for reasons I can't tell you without spoiling the, the whole book, they go after her. And being chased uh, on the uh, bio ship, the alien white rhinoceros thing comes and visits Orr and explains to her uh, that he, he was the one that saved her and that he's willing to help her uh, not uh, die or suffer the tired brain thing and help her cure her people in exchange for help 
dealing with the Shadil. Now, the alien bio ship that she's on also hears this and ends up sacrificing itself to save Orr and the other members of the, the crew and its baby from the Shadil. Now, once injected and uh, falling in space in a tiny escape capsule, they are rescued by Festino Ramos. And, well, Festino has been investigating a lot of the stuff that Yukod's family has been pulling out and exposing to the public. And in her role as troubleshooter, this is just in her bailiwick. And, of course, yeah, a lot of the Admiralty kind of really don't like her, so her entire ship is populated with various spies, and most of them are people that are being burned by Euclid's family. And one of the crew members, on hearing that, that her boss is about to get burned by this, decides to sabotage the ship. And naturally, Euclid and Orr and the others end up getting ejected once again and uh, tumbling through space. They, and they eventually get picked up by the cash links. But safety is only a momentary pleasure. As the Shadil find the cash links almost immediately, and in the final confrontation, the Shadil's real secrets are revealed. And it's safe to say that the bad guys would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those pesky kids and their alien starship. Okay, that's as spoiler as I'm going to get about the ending because there's way too much really good surprises that happen in the last few, last few chapters and I just can't give it away. It's just too good. Alright, some pros and cons for the novel. One of the biggest pros is the actual development of Orr as a character. Now, in the first novel, she was very, very childlike in her behavior and in actions. In this novel, we actually see her go from being a child to a teenager to an adult, mentally, uh, as she confronts her own mortality, as she deals with friendships and learning to care for other people, and how she actually ends up dealing with uh, you, Claude, and La Jolie's interspecies marriage problems, despite her own relationship issues from the first novel. Another really good bit is Festina gives or her two basic philosophies of life. First, don't die stupid. Second, be mindful of life. Take it all in. Live in the moment. It's really well done, and the one downside from this novel and is the cashlings. I mean, they're a metaphor for rampant consumerism, and the name is just too spot on. It's just really obvious. It is a flaw, but it's not ha hampering the novel itself, and then it's only there for a short bit, and it is tied into the secrets of the series and the novel itself. So in the end, what is the book about? Adulthood. Not just or, but everyone has to learn how to move from the being a child to being an adult. It's in the interactions, in the species that as a whole Learning to go from just searching for momentary pleasures to looking at the long view. It's about learning to face your fears. It's about learning to help others and being willing to risk yourself doing so. This is why I have to give the book four stars. Now, sadly, the book is out of print, but you can still get it on an ebook. So go, get it now, read it, enjoy. Till next time, have a good one.